Welcome everyone. This is a meeting of the design subcommittee for the Jones Library Building Committee. This subcommittee meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel at a later date. Thank you for joining us. Yes, hello, welcome. So it is uh, Friday, June 24th at 10 a.m. We usually have our meetings at nine, but we have it at 10 today. Uh, this is, is the design subcommittee for the Jones library building committee and we have our agenda and this is being recorded uh, and remote due to chapter 20 acts of 2021 we're still under that probably at least for another month um so i'll call this meeting to order i'm just going to check to see we have a lot of participants in here but um uh one of our members austin uh surat Am I saying that right? Anyways, uh, he is not here joining us today, but I have Sharon. Are you there? Sharon here. Chari? Right. Here. And George uh, here. Nick Richards. Great. We hear you too. Great. And myself. So we're the design subcommittee members that are here today. I'll move to item two. We do have a little bit of housekeeping here. We actually have three sets of minutes. Shout out to Angela for a great job. Um, so with Sharon and George, as you get it, there's only two of you. So I need you guys to, we can work through this real quick. So uh, minutes of May 27th. I move I... to approve. Second. Great. Uh, are there any issues, changes that any, you guys see? Nope. Nope. Okay, great. So we'll vote um, to approve the minutes. Sharon? Yes. Great. Uh, George? Yes. And myself? Yes, that's three. Uh, now we'll move to June 3rd. I uh, move to approve. Great. Second. Great. Any changes or suggestions? Nope. No. I see it. Okay. So, Sharon? Approve. Yes. And George? Yes. Great. And myself, that's three. And the last set, June 16th. Motion to approve. <laughs> Mixing it up there. <laughs> And I second. Great. Any changes? No. Okay, great. I think great. Sharon? Yes. George? Yes. And myself? Great. Three? Yes. Three. Thank you very much, Angela. And those will be going up and be posted. So, all right. So now we'll get down to business. Um, I just want to say a quick thing. We have item three, schematic design update. And we have Craig, you're there. Craig. Hello, everybody. Yeah, hello. And um, do we have anyone from Fine Gold Alexander? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> you have. <clears throat> I'm here, Ellen and Josephine and Steve. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome, all three. Thank you for coming. So we have a bit to discuss here, and the, there's two parts that will deal with the Civil War tablets first, and then the second is some other issues that um, with the schematic design that we're going to mm -hmm. talk about with the designers. Then I also um, want to just mention the next one uh, is item four, the outreach public comments, and we have a lot of them, and that's going to take a lot of time. So. I, we want to hear from everybody. We want, you know, to do this right, but I just want everyone to be aware that we have a lot to do today. And um, I am going to ask Fine Gold, you, all three of you don't have to stay, but I don't know, maybe Josephine, if you could stay for that next part, that outreach comments, because I do notice a lot of them have to do with little things about design and you might be able to give us input on whether or not it, it's doable or um, how, do you have that time, Josephine? You'd think that's after the what yeah, time? it's the next thing on the agenda after you do your schematic design update. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we can all stay on Christine. We're we have this booked for two hours. So right. I assume that we're gonna stick to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So we yeah, we you've got yes. the three of us for that for the two hours. Okay. I, we, Bill we it wanna, up. No, kidding. I, I wasn't <laughs> sure if it was after the two hour slot that Christine was referring no, to. No, no, no. <laughs> I just know sometimes you guys are busy people and you know I think it's important we pay enough you, to, so <laughs> right. No, but it's important enough for all of us to hear, you know, the commentary. Okay. Great. And we'll try to expedite that as quickly okay. as we can through that part. All right. So we're on item three schematic uh update. I'm gonna turn it over to Craig and then we'll um, if there's any update regular part, and then we'll move to item one, 
the Civil War tablets are A. Thank you, Christine. I'll actually, uh, in turn, hand the mic right over to uh, Feingold Alexander so they can dive right in. Okay, okay. so <clears throat> just give it, we can give a quick update. So our schematics are ongoing. Um, we're right on schedule to have those submitted as scheduled. And what most of our discussion will be on item two of this is the, the cost benefit discussion of the restrooms and exterior materials, et cetera. And we, we have a couple of plan uh, tweaks that we have done uh, and we'll go through those at that point as well. So I think we are we should kick it off. I think Christine talking about the Civil War tablets. Yes, and at this point, I just want to tell you, we have a lot of other people here at this meeting that are very interested about what's going on with the Civil War tablets. Excellent. We have okay. um, Dave Jamek, who's the town um, assistant manager, but he, um, are you there, Dave? He's like the liaison for a committee, the Civil right. War tablets um, committee. And uh, I'll just, before I um, have Dave say something, I just want to make clear to everybody, we're not like getting into the tablets about really how great they are, how special they are, or the things that can be done with them in the future and research and all that. We're really just talking about the building here. And this is the design subcommittee. So we're looking at the schematic design and it's, it's the tablets and how they're related to the building. Is there enough space? Are they in a good place? That kind of stuff. So if I'm, if I'm nipping anybody today, it's because we're really trying to focus on just design elements and not all the wonderful and potential of these tablets. So just want to make that clear. So we've invited, so you all, Ellen, are going to show us where it is at mm -hmm. right now with the yeah. schematic design. And then I'm going to let the design subcommittee ask any questions they want, which is Sharon and George um, to clarify anything. And then I was going to open it up to this, these other people from this other committee to ask and say their concerns or provide us with any information that we may not know that is, you know, important. So Dave, um, hi, are you there? Who is here with your group? Sure. Um, so thank you. I, I, I we all um, respect and understand how, how full your agenda is this morning. And, and I think we'll be very brief. Um, we will not go into you know great detail on the history of the tablets, but suffice it to say that they are priceless, unique, and we were very excited to be talking with you and and be part of the momentum of the Jones Library project. Um, I'm going to really kind of turn it over. So you'd you'd like us to say a little bit something in this slot, Christine? I, I know that one or two of the members of the working group would like to say something, so I'm happy to turn it over to them if this would be the appropriate time? Sure, and just to reiterate again, um, not so much about the specialness of the history of the research, mm -hmm. more about like, how big are they? How many are they? You know, how many names? Like things just general that have right. to do with the building. Well, if, if I could, I'll just introduce, I'm joined by Ben Brager from the planning department, Jennifer Moyston from, from town staff as well. Um, and, and I guess I would, turn it over to Jennifer, if you could maybe um, uh, introduce the rest of the, the committee, and then I'll turn it over, you know, to the committee members who would like to speak about space uh, ideas and, and desires and needs. Jennifer? Sure. Good morning, and thank you for having us here. Um, I'm Jen Moyston. I'm the assistant director to DEI. And with us, we have um, community members Gary Tartikoff and Mrs. Carly Tartikoff. We have Debbie Bridges. Um, as you guys know, Anika Lopes is in the audience as well. And we have Dr. Milkar Shabazz as well with us from our group. And so we're really just missing. Um, I'm not sure, Milkar, if Deb, uh, if D is with you or not, but the only other member that would be missing would be D. And so there, the tablets are about six feet in length and maybe four feet wide in, in height. Did I say that right? Sorry. Is that what you're asking for, Christine? And then there's about, uh, there's six of them, I believe, right? Um, they're very heavy. They're made out of marble. So they're solid marble. Um, hand carved. It's actually really uh, interesting just because you can see the the markings that people made or if they had made a mistake and how they tried to chisel it out. And so they're all very fantastic, but I'll keep short to that. But they are um, 
Yes, they are made out of marble. And so we have, they are temporarily being housed at the Bings Community Center uh, in the um, poll room, I believe that is, um, which is a nice space, but we feel like, and I think it's been talked about for a long time that, that these would find their forever home, hopefully over at the Jones Library um, in a nice space that's going to actually fit to them. And then, you know, much can be added to that to have an entire exhibit for them. And then I guess I would open it up to my, to the folks if How they want. How many wanted. names are mm -hmm. on the tablets? Oh, I don't know. Does anybody have an idea from the group, Dr. Shabazz? Three hundred. Wow. Three hundred. Yeah. These were local Amherst area people who were soldiers that fought in the Civil War, and it's yes. A, and then we I'm we also have. Now the individuals from the 54th and the 5th Regiment, which were the two Black uh, African-American uh, regiments from Am residents from Amherst, who uh, one of, if not more than one, are buried in the West Cemetery. So it's all very um, connected to Amherst. And Dr. Shabazz, you wanted to say something? Um, yeah, I guess I can say a word or two um, in keeping with the purpose of this meeting. Um, the uh, uh, an ancestor of uh, Anika Lopes, counselor Anika Lopes, um, father of Deborah Bridges here in the meeting, um, fought for many, many years to uh, return the tablets uh, to get them out of out of the storage and crates they were in and back into public visibility. Counselor Anika Lopes and her mother Deborah Bridges took up that struggle and we now have them temporarily in the Bangs Community Center. The issue for us is uh, uh, to find a place of prominence in accordance with the historical importance, a place of safety uh, from a historical preservation standpoint and from any type of vandalism or attempts at destruction or defacing, and uh, accessibility. We would not like something that's only going to be accessible for two hours a day or three hours Monday through Friday, but something that could have as, as great accessibility to the public as possible. And, um, and so these are some of the principles that have guided our efforts to find a home. I speak for myself personally, where the Vietnam War Memorial on the uh, mall, the uh, Capitol in the United States, what's always loomed in my mind as for the tablets, if they could be put behind some type of protective uh, 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 frame that would not uh, harm the visibility, but that you could, but that you could have that kind of prominence and that kind of access uh, that people could come, could see, and 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 relate to the uh, the history that is encoded in those tablets. But of course, we're not in Washington, D.C. This isn't the state, the U.S. Capitol. We're here in little town of Amherst, Massachusetts. I get that. But, but still, the principles remain of safety, accessibility, of prominence, uh, of historic preservation. These are the values that we're looking for in the future site. Sounds great. Thank you. And um, I think all that is helpful to the designers. I think... Um, they're aware, they've been aware of that. So uh, I'm gonna, at this point, swing back to Ellen and her gang to uh, which one of you wants to, well, talk, but um, who's gonna be sharing screen? Just, you're all set for that. And, oh, I do see Jennifer, she has her hand up. Jennifer, do you wanna say something, Moisten? Um, yes, so Debbie Bridges is here, who is the daughter of Dudley Bridges, and, and this is her family, and she's having a hard time raising her hand, so I wanted to give her the opportunity to speak. She's here as a panelist. So I'm going to take questions from you all after we see what the designers are proposing, because I'm sure that's going to stimulate us. A whole nother bunch of questions. So, and at that point, we'll make sure that everybody can speak and either provide information or ask a question if that's okay. So, I think we've had a good introduction. Um, so, uh, is it Ellen or Josephine? Which one of you want to show sure us nice, what nice the reason. current schematic design proposal is for housing and finding a permanent, safe, accessible home for these tablets? 
Yes, um, I'm going to share my screen, Christine. Okay, thank you, Josephine. Mm -hmm. so give me a second. Technical difficulties. No problem. Can you see that? Everyone? Yes, we can. Great. And I'll zoom in here. Okay. So this is our ground level plan. And um, the current location of um, the exhibit room for the Civil War tablets is located right here. I'm not sure if everyone can see my cursor. I can also zoom in if that um, is better for everybody. Just let me know. I would um, zoom in, Josephine. I think it will be sure. helpful. If you could speak up a little too, Josephine, it may just be me, but I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so is can everyone else hear me okay? Yes. Is it coming through okay? Because I know <laughs> I, I am having a, a couple of depth technical difficulties this morning, so that could be one of them as well. <laughs> so please right. just let me know if you can't. Hard to hear you. Great. And you uh, always try to um, individually, we you can up the volume on your, which is what I mm -hmm. do. Yes. Yeah. But yes. if you can speak up, Josephine, thank you. Sure. Um, so yes, the current location is right here for the Civil War um, tablet exhibit room. I know we've been sort of in discussions this week about um, the exact location for it, but this is the general location at the moment. Um, it it will be within this um, footprint of um, the existing building, which is the light gray walls that you see surrounding it here. Um, and at the moment, we have um, a couple of entry points to the exhibit room, and that's something that we want to talk to you folks about as far as um, entry and security and um, also visibility. Um, so uh, we do have the special collections exhibit as one adjoining room here, um, and the at the rear is the special collection storage, which we do not have connection to at the moment. Um, and so what you're seeing here are um, two existing masonry walls um, for, you know, a portion of the um, exhibit room, and then we have two new walls as well. So, um, of course, there, there, there will be further discussion on how these um, tablets are displayed and whether they're um, wall mounted or um, mm -hmm. displayed on the floor or if there's a mix. Um, but this is the general um, location at the moment. So um, we are open to um, discussing more at this point or if there's any questions at the moment, um, feel free to jump in. Josephine, I, I think, Ellen here, um, I think that the big question I would like to get some feedback from, uh, we have photographs of the, the current installation of the tablets and just some feedback if folks think that's the right approach. Okay, so um, I'll open it up to the design committee. Um, first, do they have any questions or want to make any comments about how this um, design came about that Sharon and George? Yeah, no, I'd actually really love to just open the floor to the Civil War Tablets Working Group, and I would love for them to have an opportunity to discuss everything with with the designers. I'd love to just, it, I, I want them to go. <laughs> exactly. I agree with Sharon. Right. Um, this is Deborah. Um, I believe I think the proposed space looks great in my opinion, and I'm looking forward to explore how it will interpret the endless content that comes from these tablets that represent the blueprint of Amherst history. This is also an amazing opportunity for economic growth. We can leave that discussion for later, but I also believe I think the tablets would be great on the wall. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so can someone answer why would they not be put on the wall and 
I think they're on like, um, like kind of horses, rolling horses, like how, how, how are they best um, displayed or are there issues with fragility or something? Does anyone know that answer? Well, right now they're on easel like um, yeah. that's, that's built. And are we okay? Christine, are we okay just jumping in here? Or um, well, it's, we're trying so, to raise uh, our hands, but I don't know. You know what? So I'll ask, this is, it's a good point. Thank you, Dave. So I'm gonna roll to you first, um, is the highest, the, the point of contact with this. And if you wanna roll it to somebody else who can answer, that's fine. But so yeah. I'll ask you, Dave, um, are they're being designed to be on these easels like they are now, is that optimal, is that, and, archivally is that how they should be stored so let me get to that in a minute i guess i wanted to first of all i wanted to thank the designers the architects for for this this look today i think this is you know some months ago we were looking at the schematics and and there were ideas for maybe the tablets being in other locations but i i would echo what dr shabazz said moments ago about prominence access um, security and and I for one am really pleased to see a um, uh, 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 space allocated specifically for the tablet. I think these are should be prominent pieces within special collections, but of course within all of the collections that are unique and and so special in the, in the Jones Library. I would also note, if I'm not mistaken, that the door uh, that is referenced uh, over to the left, which I believe is the north facing new door. Is that, if I'm correct? Uh, the, uh, no, the door to the main library, to the back door. Oh, oh that, that will be a, a prominent entrance to the library. So as people come into the library, this is one of the first things they will uh, be afforded to uh, um, you know, explore and and, uh, um, and and get to know. So I, I'm I'm really pleased that they they have their own space, that security could be achieved, and that accessibility could also be achieved. I think I will defer to Ben and some of the other members of the working group. I honestly, I'm not a design expert. I don't think any of us are design experts. I believe that all the research I've done and all the meetings I've been a part of. My understanding is that the tablets in general were designed to be displayed, you know, on vertically on a wall would probably be best. There is a sequence to them um, with the introductory tablet going first. Um, but again, I think it, we would probably be incumbent upon us to work with a designer within the room to come up with the appropriate design within the room. If we are afforded this space and this space works, I'm not sure what the square footage of that, I, I may not be able to read that, um, but um, whatever the square footage is, we would then work with the designer um, and and create a, a permanent uh, a display within the room. So I'll stop there and turn it over to other members of the working group. Thank you. Just to finish, because this is, again, what I was talking about, it's a building issue. Um, I don't know which uh, one of the designers can answer this. And Dave, it's 545 square feet. Um, these tablets are heavy. They're marble. Um, they're currently on these rolling easels. And I don't know if that's what the designers were designing for. But if you if we went with this design, are the tab like do the walls have to be designed differently if they were to have to support these tablets, like if they were mounted? Absolutely. So is that something that has to sort of be decided now? It you know in schematic design. No. No, I think and just being chime in here. I think we can anticipate them being very heavy, and maybe that wall becomes. Uh, you know, a masonry wall with some jip on it rather than just a jip wall. So we can mm. we can put something in there that it's not a big lift, Christine, at this point. OK, um, but should that be something that this committee is um, exploring and figuring out over the next few months? Like I know, you you know, schematic design, we're trying to wrap up where in DD in the design phase would you need to know that kind of thing? Josephine? We I mean, the sooner the better always for everything, right? Um, 
<laughs> what we want to know is, yes, if we're going to go the wall route and hang them, then we would, um, you know, do our design a little bit differently, as Ellen mentioned, but on also we might want to consider um, someone had mentioned at the last meeting about having some visibility in there. So um, if we're using most of the wall space, then we won't be, um, you know, removing portions of the masonry wall and adding glazing, for instance. So it's those kind of kinds of things that we'd right. want to know a little bit sooner than later during DD would be great. Thank you. So Dave, is that something that you all have been discussing or do you know when that kind of decision would be, you know, cause I assume part of this is an archival decision too, what's best for the tablets. We have not gotten to that stage yet. I'd love to have some of the other members. I see lots of hands up. So I'd love yeah. to have some of the other members chime in. Um, the tablets uh, weigh roughly 600 pounds plus or minus each. So I'm sure Ben has many of the statistics on the tablets themselves. So I think discussions of what the walls are made of and loads, load bearing and all of that mm -hmm. is all relevant. But I think we're not quite to that stage yet. We would be happy to do more research on that, but I would love to hear from some of the other members of the working group. Okay, so I see, oh, now a fourth hand just went out. I saw three, I'm gonna go with um, in the order of, uh, Gary, then Ben, then um, Carly, and um, Professor Shabazz. I just saw his hand come up. So, um, Gary, hello, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, I actually am a historian of design. I taught the history of design. We called it history of art at UMass a long time ago, and later taught at the University of Iowa State University. Uh, when and I would just want to speak a little bit about the importance of the tablets in the design and people's experience of the building. Right now, when you walk into the Jones Library, one of the first pictures you see is this large picture of a British official general. Uh, it isn't Lord Jeffrey, but people sort of walk in, maybe think it's a Lord Jeffrey, and that's the name of the town in a way and the name of the library, and it does put a certain kind of sense of history into the building, even if the building isn't that old, and even if that is Lord Jeffrey. When we walk into this building, those plaques, if they're visible, are, are gonna be very defining in terms of the history of Amherst. And, and they have a great representation in the history of Amherst in American history, its position in American history. I think it's important to remember that. Uh, so I, I don't think we're going to be able to put them on roller. They're on rollers right now, or they're on those easels because there was no way to put them on a wall. The reason that they aren't any longer in the town hall, which is where they used to be dis displayed, the same way people get to Amherst and they see that giant old wonderful pseudo Romanesque town hall. When they were in the town hall, they used to see those plaques which represented the history of the town in a lot of ways. Uh, I had the experience myself of being at the University of Virginia once just walking onto the campus to see what it was like. And I'm walking as a historian of design, but also as a tourist walking. And you ran into almost immediately the history of the people lost in the Civil War. Uh, and uh, it certainly functioned the South's version of the Civil War. We were looking at the rebels as the people being remembered by the University of Virginia. I was shocked seeing that kind of thing. And since then we've seen some of those old uh, images of Civil War rebels come down. Uh, I don't think these Amherst citizens who died in the war uh, are gonna be less important for us than those were for those people who put those up. It's an important st statement of who we are. Uh, these men died for us and it included a variety of the town's members, including a black as well as white people who fought in the war. So it's an important set of images of them up on the wall are gonna say a lot of things to us about who we are and to others about who we are. And uh, so I don't think, you know, they're not just decoration, they really are very important symbols of who we're gonna be. And, and by putting them in an entrance room where you, know, where you see it as you come in and, uh, and putting some stuff around it to indicate what they stand for and who they are, we're gonna be saying a lot of things about ourselves that are quite important. And that, that's all I wanted to offer at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, ben, are you there? Yeah, hi everyone, thank you. Um, 
So Ben Breger, I'm in the planning department and I've worked with uh, the tablets over the past two years, uh, helping them to get moved over to their current location. Um, I just wanted to chime in a little bit about the discussion, uh, wall mounted versus uh, easels on the ground. Um, I think I've, again, we haven't discussed this in the working group quite yet, but my, um, my uh, inclination is that these should be wall mounted. Um, I, I think of them as, you know, they're museum quality artifacts. They're, they should be treated as such. Um, and, you know, I think, and Ms. Bridges can probably speak to this better than I have for experience managing the current exhibit, but um, these really shouldn't be touched by people. Their marble is a very porous stone and oils and any sort of moisture will, uh, you know, cause blemishes over time. Um, so for that reason, and just because, you know, if they're on the ground, they become a tripping hazard, you know, there might be kids running around, um, you know, spilling their milkshakes on it or something. I don't know. I think we just want to be careful and put these on the wall, maybe even put like a little kind of like rope around them. So people aren't getting within a few feet of them even. Um, so I think that that's always been my kind of goal, I guess, is, is thinking about the design of the space like that. I mean, the, the, all that is to say, I think it's um, seeing them on the easels right now, it's really interesting to see the backside of the tablets because there's uh, kind of some interesting markings on the back and you really get to see the, the texture of the stone, which is really interesting. Um, you know, this is marble that was probably hand chiseled in the 18, you know, late 1800s. It's really cool to see. Um, but I think for the longevity and the sustainability of the tablets, getting them on the wall would be the, the ideal. And yeah, just to re reiterate, we haven't actually weighed them. We haven't really had a way to do that, but based on their, you know, cubic footed foot size or whatever, we've then found a unit rate, unit weight for uh, marble. And we think they're, you know, probably around 800 pounds each, but um, so they're they're very big and very heavy. Uh, we we had a uh, a company move them that specialized in countertop uh, moving, so they had this very specialized equipment. Um, so that that would be uh, one thing I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention was picking up on what Mr. Tartikoff just mentioned. Um, I think being very intentional about how you design this entry sequence. Um, you know, I think on the outside of this Civil War tablet exhibit space there should be some something. It could be even the, the dedication plaque could even be on the outside of the room, something that draws people into the space. Because um, otherwise, if it's just a, you know, opaque door that um, you might not know to go in there, that, that what incredible uh, artifacts lie within there. So just thinking about what could be on the outside of that room as people enter to draw them in, it'll be really the first thing they see. Um, so it would be interesting to see what that design sequence or that entry sequence looks like. Um, and, and again, yeah, folks are looking for more information about the dimensions or, or weight or anything more about the history of the tablets. They've been pretty well documented over the years and I have a, uh, a file with a lot of information on them. So happy to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Um, Carly, are you there? Yes. Welcome. I, I only have one one question the tablets were hung in the in the uh, town hall at one time isn't that correct yes and was the problem the weight of the tablets um so my understanding is that they were not actually hung in town hall they actually oh. they were resting on the floor um in the in the in what was the old police station in the basement of town hall oh, carly i could i could add one thing to that they they were actually in some of the landings on the stairwell and about 20 some odd years ago um, um you know town hall was renovated but what was also determined as we looked at putting the we did look very hard very closely at putting the tablets back in town hall and one of the things we struggled with was one was the weight and and the loading. And the second thing, uh, which really was was the end of that idea was accessibility that we couldn't, um, the, putting them on the landings would no longer serve one of our goals. 
but it would also um, it's not really legal to put to put um, exhibits of any kind where some people can't reach them. So the landings in the stairwell are not fully accessible to all. So that's why town hall was really taken off the, the list of possibilities. And I don't remember, I grew up in Amherst. I remember the old police station. They were, they might've been there when I was a child. I don't remember our current police chief, Scott Livingstone does remember when the tablets were there and they were, they were not well cared for in the police station um, <laughs> at that time. So. Um, anyway, those are just my. Thank you. All helpful. Carly, is there anything else? Oh, my other uh, questions, I think, were answered. Great. Thank you. Um, Professor Shabazz? Yes. So I have uh, some contextual questions and then some other uh, in another area. But um, can someone share and cherry perhaps, or someone guide me as to where in the footprint of the current Jones Library are we really talking about? I can't tell from this map whether we're where we are. Uh, sure, yes. Uh, so right, the existing 1928 walls, that's, that's this thicker gray line. Oh, here I am highlighting it and it's not my screen. I'm sorry. So yes, Josephine is highlighting it. So those are the original 1928 walls. Um, and this is on the ground floor. So this is uh, right now. What is that right now? Is that towards the ESL department right now? Yeah, that's roughly yeah. the ESL department and uh, like the the um, career center area at the back okay. of the building. So if you were in the basement of the building and looking out the window facing the garden, that's roughly that space. Uh, and you can actually see the where the existing windows are along that wall adjacent to that hallway. Thank you. That's very helpful for me to, to visualize. Uh, the other thing being 545 square feet, how does that compare, maybe as uh, ZMEC knows, um, to the poll room we're in at the Bangs? About what's, what's the comparison in the square footage? I would need to defer to Ben on that or, or, or someone else. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head the square George, footage. George has his hand up too. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah, when I went to the poll room to measure the tablets themselves, uh, I measured the general space that the tablets were holding with enough space for accessibility around them. And that's where I came up with the 545 square feet. So it's not the, it's not the size of the poll room itself uh, because the tablets only take up a portion of it. So I measured the existing tablet display with them on the easels and uh, plenty of accessibility space around them. And that's where we came up with that figure. So it's so fairly comparable to the space it's taking up in the poll room now. Yes, yes. Again, that's, that's also very helpful. Um, and, and the sense of the hours uh, relative to it being in this location, are we talking about when the hours of the main library? Are we talking about accessibility? Even, you know, like if there are events in the evening and maybe the regular library space is not open, is there some sense of how in this location, what the, what the hours of the day we'd be talking about? Dr. Shabazz, thank you for asking. Yes. So one of the, the, the beautiful aspects of, of the location here is, as Dave said, it's the first thing people are going to see, but also this is our after hours floor in essence. So, um, so not only will these exhibit spaces, both the Civil War tablets exhibits and the special collections exhibit spaces be open during all hours that the library is open, but it they are both available to the community after hours. And so there will be, you know, a, a, a reservation process. But if, if like, if your working group wanted to have a community event after hours on a Sunday or whenever, you could absolutely do that because these spaces will be blocked off from the rest of the library. Thank you. That's very yeah. important to know. Thank you. That. The other thing that I would weigh in to say is, I think in against somewhere on the walls 
is more desirable. That long black line that separates the special collections exhibit area from the Civil War tablet exhibit area, what are we talking about there? 14 feet, 12 feet? Josephine can get us that number. Okay. Um, the reason being is then if you're, I, I would imagine we'd be looking at along that wall for a lot of the, the main tablets, maybe then cutting around toward what looks to me as sort of the bottom of that floor from the perspective I'm looking at, and then perhaps even hooking around there back to back around to the entrance door. And I hope at some point as things would move into a more specific phase that you could bring us back in. Uh, Deborah Bridges and, and working with uh, staff at the Jones Library Special Collections have added elements even beyond the, the tablets themselves that lend to the interpretation. Some of these items are from the Special Collections hold Things. Some are from outside those holdings, but they add to it. So it wouldn't just be a matter of then sticking them against a wall or on a wall, but also to think about it from the from the uh, visitor experience, muse muse museology, basic 101, you know, to think about how there's space remaining for some of these interpretive pieces that 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 help to to bring the whole the whole experience together of the tablet. So I would hope with with uh, Dr. Tartikoff there, with uh, 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 the Dr. Tartikoff, uh, as well as with uh, uh, Deborah Bridges and and uh, and myself, there's a, a time for perhaps another look in a more detailed way against that. The other thing is the A-frame kind of situation we have right now, besides what Ben already laid out relative to safety and, and, uh, and whatnot, that was always conceived as more of a temporary opportunity to just, first of all, for us to see what, what they looked like, but then to open it up to visits. Um, but uh, but definitely for for reasons Ben mentioned and and and, uh, and and even others that come to mind that is not an an ideal um, an ideal way of uh, of presenting it over the long long term. Thank you. Yeah, you know what I what I'm envisioning this. Uh... I agree with you 150%. I think there's a really exciting opportunity here for ongoing, consistent, consistently changing uh, exhibits. There's an opportunity. It, it, if all of the tablets are placed on the walls, then the center could be reserved for, you know, there could be a bench, there could be seating, there could be pedestals, there could be um, a, a display boards for more, um, uh, for, for more materials that that explain the history behind the tablets, um, so there's a there's a lot of options. Thank you. It, this is really helpful. What I'm realizing is everything that I've been hearing or thinking was sort of keeping it static that they were on these easels, but now as we're talking, I'm hearing wall, wall, wall for many many reasons. Um, Josephine, have you been able to get the dimensions of that? those walls, the length and the width of those walls, because doing a rough calculation, and my belief is there's six tablets, but one is smaller, but just assuming the six are the same, there's, um, if they're, I heard six Christina, by four. Christina, I did I, the math. It's 37 yeah. feet of tablet. It's approximately what? 37 feet of li linear that's feet. That's what of I tablet. got too. Yeah. Without space between. Correct. If that's just tablet. Yes. Right. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to bring up, and Josephine uh, will get that number, is that somebody should be curating this, right? And and we are happy to accommodate yeah. anything because it sounds like these are so important to the town. It really should have somebody curating the show. And that's not our expertise. Um, but we're here to help and we can provide the walls to, uh, to, uh, to hang these things for sure. But someone needs to really guide the group, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ellen. Steve, I see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to chime in about the, the lengths of those walls. So that wall that you're seeing running north south on the plan is uh, just over 30 feet long. And the 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 wall Perfect. that runs uh, east west um, that then uh, aligns with the existing exterior wall is another 17 
feet and some change. So you've got 47 feet of, in this configuration, you've got- So there's 40. some good length there. That's correct. I don't know if Thanks. this matters or not. And I really want to hear from uh, Jen Moiston. You had your hand up and, and Dr. Shabazz again. So in, in my mind, as we move into design development, I was actually thinking that the special collections exhibit space and the civil war tablets exhibit space would be, uh, rotated 90 degrees so that there so that both entrances would be on that main hallway um not that it matters for the space i'm not talking about uh, uh, reducing or enlarging those the square footage i'm just mm. I, I envision a, a a flipping a little bit anyways thank you is there only one door in and out of this room Currently, that's what we're showing. That's something that well, we- I can't hear you, Josephine. That's currently what we're showing, but that's something that we would want to discuss with you also, just generally, um, you know, if we probably would want to look at what we're doing with the entry door, if it's going to be glass, a large door, as someone had mentioned, you know, just the sequencing um, of getting into the space and, and which other adjoining rooms will have access to it, if any but currently there is only one. And it's a single door. Obviously you can see they're not a double door. At the moment. But in one of our challenges, just, mean, just to chime in is, yeah. there's a historic structures report on this building. And there's, I in my mind, I would love to open that door up to be wider and more glass. Yeah. Um, but it's, one of our challenges is to keep the historic fabric intact. So it's really a balance. And, and as we go through the design and get some uh, feedback from a, a curator, I think we could work with the group on that. Okay, good to know. Thank you. I see three hands. Um, I'll call on Professor um, Shabazz first, and then I see Dave and Jennifer. Yes, the, um, the other thing I wanted to lend support to is the idea that, uh, that Ben mentioned that perhaps that small sort of introductory uh, tablet uh, could be displayed maybe right somewhere near the front entrance and guiding people to, to uh, or, or letting people know about the exhibit or it just is a, it's an interesting idea to me. I don't think that the, the all, that that particular piece has to be in, in, in the same area with the other tablets. It's an interesting idea to play with if, if there's something, if there's some important air, other area to, uh, to, to post it. Thank you. Thanks. Dave? I would like to speak, but I know Jennifer has had her hand up for quite some time. So if, if you could take Jennifer first, I would follow Jennifer. Thank you. Sure. Jennifer? Um, on mute. Whoops. Sorry. Um, there's two ways to mute here on, on my system. <laughs> sorry. Um, so we have been talking. Um, about a curator. And I, I believe that William Harris will, will help to curate the tablet. And Danica can talk more about that as well. And that opens up lovely opportunities for many, many more things to come into that exhibit space for the tablets as well. Great, um, thanks. Dave? Sure. Just to build on that a little bit, and, and our group has not gotten together for a while, and, and this is a great opportunity where we're, I'm sure we're, we have lots of ideas coming out of this meeting, so we'll meet again soon. But I think going back to what um, Ellen or, or someone else on the call said, I think in my mind, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, you know, again, we are very thankful and very uh, excited to collaborate with this project, with you all on this project. But in my mind, there is kind of a, a distinction here between the space that is being offered to us and talked about today. And, and we'll, you know, we'll work with you on, on how this, you know, some of the input from this, but it seems to me that um, the, the design of, of and, and how we get the tablets there and how they are displayed, um, is really on on our group to 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 figure out and design. So 
we are appreciative that you are thinking of the structural and and the architecture of this of this new and expanded Jones Library. But I think it then becomes incumbent upon our group to work with a curator slash designer to figure out um, how the tablets get uh, uh, affixed to the wall and and where you know as as uh, Dr. Shabazz says where where um, you know where does the introductory tablet go? What are some of the other associated exhibits? So. Um, I guess I just wanted to make that distinction, and if 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 I'm if I'm on with that, is that how we're thinking of this? So you need to know structurally what do these walls need to bear, how much load do they need to bear, and how the rooms are configured, and then it's on us really to come up with the design within the space. We're going to fit out the space. Our working group is going to work with a curator and and or a designer to figure out how do we put these things on these load bearing walls, and where do they go, and and all of that great stuff. So, and we may need to raise a little money to do that. And, and I have talked about in years past, potentially um, approaching the CPA committee if we need more money and, and maybe there are other fundraising opportunities or, or grants out there to, to raise more money if we need that. So just putting that out there that we, I think we understand that. In, in the place, just a suggestion, the place I would start with thinking about these of what walls to hang them on are the new walls, so the walls in black. Um, in, because to hang them on the exterior walls, I think that will be something that um, may be an issue. So if we can keep it on the new walls, we can accommodate those. My guess is we're going to need, because that's pretty heavy, we'll probably have to add a footing as well to support the bearing walls. But it's all things we can do. It's not a big issue. But something that needs to be dealt with and thought about. Absolutely. Now, um, given the dimensions that uh, the 30 and the 17 and looking at the schematic, the drawing there, you know, it's really only about 40 feet of new wall, which is enough, but not my, I mean, it's, tight and again you need six foot lengths to you know can two fit on that bottom wall or whatever this all has to be figured out but i think the designers i think th there needs to be an assumption that you're going to have to beef out these interior black walls what else do you need to know to move forward for schematic design josephine Um, that will probably cover us for the moment. Um, I suppose if we know of any other points of entry that you might want, extra doors or any kind of, you know, um, any special treatments that we would be adding to our documents, such as any glazing or things like that. Um, those are the only other items probably that would be great to have. But again, we can add that during DD if we just don't know about that yet. And Josephine, our schematic design drawings are going out to the cost estimator. What's the date next week, correct? Yes. So, yes, I mean, anything we can't add, we certainly will, you know, start putting it into the DED portion, but the sooner the better, even for that, because some, some of the items might require, you know, certain level of detail um, that we would like to get into the DD set. So, Anything basic that we know now that would add cost would be great. But again, you know, as the sooner the better during DD for any more information. Right. And and just to put like a you know, a time frame on that, we're looking to finish DD when end of September or mid-September. Um, I think we are actually in the November range for DD. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we have some time, but we we need to, you know, we would encourage the group to to get, you know, to get someone in here to curate the show. I'm thinking they go on the walls, but maybe they don't. Maybe you have them on some structure in the middle of the room, but you know that I don't know if that's the best way to if you have enough room to view them properly. So there's really a lot that goes into this, um, but but we're we're here uh, to help. Um, okay, I see. Thank you, uh, Gary, and then Jennifer. Gary, uh, my question is: uh, 
address partly to the person whose screen we're looking at. If we could step back a bit from the plan, it cuts off. We're looking at the rear entrance. Where is the front entrance to the building? That's at the upper level on level one. So we're at the ground. On, on a higher level. Yes. And, and so this would be, the, that's the entrance. It's the back, well, it's the back entrance that's there now. And the service entrance is more or less the same place as now. Is that correct? The service entry is at the same, is, is, yeah. it, is at the same point, yes. Okay, so these are not on the same level that most people would walk in on from the front stairs. They'd be coming down the stairs from the front or coming in the back entrance of the library to see these. Right, this is the rear entry here. And then this is the main stair that brings you to level one. So they would be coming off of this elevator or this stair. Is that that, that, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Jennifer? Hi, thank you. I have to um, hop off because I have an 11 o'clock Zoom, but I just wanted to come back to reiterate, and I think that what the Civil War Tablets group probably needs to do at this point is to have a conversation with Mr. William Harris, um, who would be the curator, um, and then come back to the design table or work with the design folks to do that, uh, to figure out what the next steps would be. Um, but I I think that William Harris himself has enough resources and connections where he can really help us to expand this exhibit space. And so as long as we have time, I, I and again, I'm not 100% sure how I feel about on the wall or not, because I also really enjoy the fact that you can see that the, the back side of the tablets when the way that they are right now is similar to what, um, Ben was stating. So I just think that the group itself has some, like Dr. Shabazz, Mrs. Dr. Shabazz, uh, both the Dr. Tartikoffs and um, Anika and Ben and Debbie, and we should all, and, and Dave should get together and have a conversation first. Or because I think um, there have been changes made that I don't know that everybody was aware of ahead of time. So we would just need to sit down and chat. Thank you, Jennifer, and um, thank you for coming. If you're leaving, thank you for your input. Um, so uh, just to finish up for today, what if I don't see any other hands, if I think, um, so the, the tablet committee, they have some work they need to do and to decide and, and get some information on uh, and get back to the designers. At this point, I think the designers, I, I think we have a space it, that everyone's pretty good with. Uh, I understand that the gray line is the old uh, foundation stone of the old building. So it's sensitive to how much you can knock that out and take it out. We have a single door, might be nice to have a double door, more glass or a second door, um, but I know code probably um, impacts that. So is there anything else before we move on that you need to know for schematic design? Ellen or Josephine or Craig. Go ahead, Josephine. I just noted, I think we're okay. I think we're good with the information we have. Okay. Excellent. Craig? Um, I would suggest for process wise, this may be something that is um, helpful to the Civil War Tablets Committee. Um, I think Sharon earlier mentioned, you know, the potential to say rotate these two rooms so that they're both um, accessible from that main corridor. Um, perhaps if the design team is able to block that out and then share that with um, say you or Sharon to then transmit that information to the Civil War Tablets Committee that might help them in their initial discussions of um, how they want the space to function, how they want to display these things within that room. And maybe some you know, overall dimensions, like this is you know, 17 feet, this is 30 feet, but not. Sounds good, yeah. 
So just to make note for everyone that the next room, it, things got flipped a lot, but the room to uh, the right is the special collections exhibit, um, you know, tiny bit bigger, but essentially the same space. Originally, when I had looked at this, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if that was a, you know, a, a wall that could be moved, you know, panels or extra doors in it, um, you know, so it could be a larger space or you could, you know, have flow between the two rooms if, um, if it's a special event or related exhibits. But now that we're talking about potentially putting these on the wall, that could really change that. So um, I just look forward to some final answers so that we can, uh, you know, in the DD phase, get this um, to uh, fulfill as many functions and needs as possible. So um, I don't see any other hands on this. I think we're done for the day unless anyone else has a comment. I don't see anything, but I wanna thank everybody for coming. Um, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, designing, um, we have experts here, but it takes uh, special um, thinking and uh, forecasting the future. So uh, we're working on it and uh, thank you. So- um, Christine, can I just yeah. thank yeah. everybody? We wanna thank the whole committee, you know, the working group for coming, but also all of you for, for spending so much time with us. And, and I do like the idea that if, if these rooms are flipped, if that information could come to us. And, and I think in my mind, the, the main issue for, for the team, the architectural team is, is the, the load bearing nature of the new walls, you know, in these two rooms, because it seems to me that edging our bets, it is likely these tablets would best be on, on those long walls and, and having those be structurally sound enough to bear the weight of, of these tablets makes, makes, makes sense. And I think we've heard that from the working group, but we look forward to, to more information and more sharing throughout the summer and early fall. And we will come back to you if we have any additional information, but we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, this was, this was really helpful, I think. Um, so at this point, uh, we're gonna move on to um, the second schematic update uh, with the designers, cost benefit discussion, the restrooms, exterior materials, the elevator. Um, so whoever wants to talk about that. So I can jump, I guess, right into stay on the plans. <laughs> um, and um, I guess, should we sort of talk through some of the plan adjustments or just jump into the elevator? However you guys would like for us to move forward. Um, we figured we'd talk through the plans a little bit first. Do that, whatever is best for you all, we're listening. Okay, um, so just to quickly touch base on the changes that we've made since we met last, which I think we covered most of the changes with all of with all of you, but um, of course we just you know had this discussion on the Civil War tablets. But um, in in the shift of the elevator um, of you know removing the existing elevator as we talked about Tuesday night, um, we did gain space on every level. So we'll just go through that here um, on every floor and show you on the ground level um, removing the existing elevator and the um, machine room in this location here, we were able to gain a little bit square footage back. So we sort of grew the um, special collection storage here a little bit. So we got a little bit of space back since we lost a little bit of plan north for the Civil War room. So <clears throat> this is a plus in our minds. Um, we know that um, special collection space um, is important and we don't wanna lose too much from there. So um, that's the biggest change um, at the ground level. Um, so if we, does anyone have questions before we move to level one? So moving up to level one, um, I think we covered probably most of the changes that have happened here. So I'm just going to dive into um, the, uh, again, the location of the existing elevator. Um, with the removal of that here, we gained more space in the material return room, um, which is uh, beneficial because um, the space is in an existing nook. Um, so uh, gaining any extra space here is great. Um, the only other changes that I'm not sure if the whole group saw 
for the offices that we shifted plan north. Um, so we sort of took the um, east side of the new addition and created these um, spaces here uh, for the borrower service, head of collections, and then we created a quiet study. Um, this allows for, I think, um, adjacencies and um, a little extra space um, where this was just open seating previously. And um, I think that's the biggest changes for level one. So I'll move up to level two if no one has any questions. Um, so you'll see here again, um, this carving out of um, blue space up here in the, in the new edition, um, we did the same thing on both levels and we um, placed the head of information services, head of programming and branch all in this space here. So the idea is that they will be op um, closed offices, but um, with glazing. So uh, a lot of visibility and um, we think this will, again, work well for the adjacencies that were requested. Um, and again, going back down plan south to the elevator space, um, the existing elevator was in the reading room area here. Um, so again, we just gained more square footage back for that space, which is great. Um, the other change, which I'm not sure if we had um, shown previously, was that we did include a ramp on this level um, per Austin's comments. Um, we currently um, have, <clears throat> excuse me, we currently have it located right next to the, the steps that go to the, you know, adult collections here, um, the new addition wing. And we just have a straight ramp that's going um, that's going up um, to meet the 18 inch difference. Any questions on this level? Those were the yeah. changes I think since last time. <laughs> I have I have a question, Josephine, and I, I was chatting with some people about the, the ramp, yay. Yes. But so could we just get rid of those stairs and just have all ramp? That way everybody uses the same path. You don't have well, to answer it now. It's just kind of, yeah. you know, in universal design, instead of retrofitting in theory with, with that up ramp, why don't we just have one big ramp, get rid of the stairs? I think that's something we can talk about further. Um, I don't think um, I've done something like that previously, but it's something we can definitely look at. It would have to be um, wider. As you mentioned, um, but yeah, that's something we can we can look at. <laughs> I love your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, I just just consider it. It's obviously a a long stretch, yeah. um, but I yeah mm -hmm. I I th how I think long it is that ramp? Eighteen feet. Eighteen. Oh, approximately. Let's yeah. call it 20. <laughs> That's so if you doubled it, you know, and I mean, it's the size of a room, like all slam, like, yeah. Yeah, the reason it looks small is because the footprint of this building is pretty large, right? So yeah. it looks kind of small, but but it, it definitely, um, you know, we have about an eight, I want to say 18 inch plus or minus difference in slab elevations from the corridor to the, to the, to the addition. So telling people it's 18 inches, it goes down over 18 feet. Correct, yes. Yeah. Craig, I see your hands up. Yes, I think that's a, a cool idea and definitely something worth looking into. Right off the top of my head, I do know that once you get uh, past a certain width of ramp, then you need to have intermediate railings, but um, still something that could be looked into. and. You know, maybe it's not just a ramp, maybe it's a ramp with stuff happening on the sides. And so it's kind of a, a space in and of itself. But perhaps not for SD, maybe that's something that gets developed more in DD. And, and typically, code-wise, we don't need the ramp. That was a request uh, from somebody on in the committee. 
Um, but we, yeah, we can look at this more in DD. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. And Austin's not here today. I'm sure he'd have some thoughts on this. So yeah, maybe that can come up again at a later meeting. Okay. There's no other questions. I can. I uh, know. I see no hands. So moving up to the top level is the biggest change for for the um, elevator, of course, as we talked about Tuesday night. Um, this is the new elevator going up to this top floor now, and with the removal um, of the existing elevator that was here. Um, we do gain more space back for the staff break room. We are still playing around with this floor plan um, on this level, but at the moment, this is what we're carrying for SDs. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing really here is um, this connection point to the um, new elevator and having this, um, you know, be accessible for everyone. Um, we did show on Tuesday night that exterior rendering um, of what you know, this um, will look like from a distance. It's really, um, it's, it's as minimal as it can be. We did tuck it back as much as we could. Um, so um, this is where we are at the moment for this level. So some of the things that we talked about at the the full building committee meeting uh, was, you know, what do you put on all of those walls? And our our uh, head of special collections mentioned, you know, we have we have a pretty large fine arts collection, so we've got stuff to to put on these walls. The other thing is, so we have the Whipple window. Um, so it's now it's like this half moon. It's this beautiful window um, that came from the Whipple house uh, and it's got to go somewhere. So I didn't know if there was a, a space up there or if it belongs in special collections. I, I don't know, but um, we, we have things. We're, the staff are also very happy that the bathrooms are not now opening onto, you know, where people will be eating. So thank you. Um, so that is a very long um, corridor uh, when you exit or from the elevator the new elevator. Um, I know Austin had some concerns about this. I believe 18 feet or something was said, and then another at least 13 um, heading off to the west. Are there any windows? I mean, I, I know Sharon just brought up that pretty one, but it's a, a long, dark corridor, you know, and even putting pictures on it. Are there any places that you can put windows? We are showing glazing right now on these walls. Okay, that's what I want. That's what I, so the, I could see the one on the inner wall, but there's also ones on the, uh, oh, now I can see. Thank you. Oh, that is, that's helpful. I think that, so it's more you're walking through like a, like a, a glass. Bridge, if you want to bridge. call it a bridge. Yeah. Okay. That's, and then we still have kind of the wonky double staircases coming into that, um, mm -hmm. 400 square foot face. I, I think in the last meeting, someone, maybe Steve was saying how you were going to look at the stairs and see if you could do anything. Did that happen? Well, really what it comes down to is, um, you know, we have to keep this raving on the stair. So um, we certainly can look at other options of maybe where the stair drops you, um, but it will, um, it will, you know, jog that that rating, that wall rating that we need makes it a little bit more complicated, can be done, but um, but <laughs> this is probably something we'll have to look at in DD, I'm thinking. Yeah, we. I, th I think, Christine, we just didn't have time to look at it. Yeah. We met in-house to talk about it. Um, it. The most cost-effective way is the way we have it now, because we're stacking the rating, right? But yeah. we can, we, we talked in-house that we'll take a quick look at it, and uh, to see if we could do something that it makes it a little nicer. And maybe it, it, that we do, at this location, we don't stack and we can come up with a better setup, but we'll look at that in design development. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, did you um, get any cost information? I know you can't, we're gonna have a big cost estimate done, but just like more expensive, least expensive for any of those uh, exterior materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elevator, we seemed, so is that the decision we're taking the elevator out or is this still a decision that has to be made by the committee? 
we made the decision, so we need you guys to make the decision. <laughs> and I say that joking, because, but I'm, but I think the important thing here, and Josephine, you can chime in, is that we believe it's the best thing for the library because that existing elevator is not accessible. It needs to be upgraded. It, and then it, it just is a maintenance thing over time. And yeah. our mission in libraries is not to create maintenance issues, right? And we can right. achieve accessibility everywhere with this new elevator. Yeah, we really needed, it needed to go for so many reasons. Thank you. So that's the cost benefit that take the old elevator out. Yeah. And we're, we're pretty solid on that one. Then you had brought us some different restroom um, options um, and uh, with the gender inclusivity going to the individual, mm -hmm. um, individual, um, I guess the toilet, rooms um, is more pricey. I don't know if, you know, cause we're gonna have to make a decision on that. So um, cost will have a impact in our decision. And then the exterior materials. I mean, everybody loves the brick and, and the slate. We all love that look, but we're really trying hard to look at other options or reasons why um, to try to save money so we can stay under budget. Right. And I think for um, the restrooms, um, sort of where we landed was that, um, yes, it, it does cost more for that heavy option three. Um, and if we want, if you folks would like to see pricing on that, I think we sort of talked about maybe having, pulling out that option and putting it as part of maybe our SD package. And then we could mm -hmm. sort of get a cost of um, what would that be? we could almost break it down as like, what does it really cost for um, additional for each stall because it's closed off stalls, right? In option three. So our estimator probably can give us a number for what like each stall might cost. And then we could go about it that way or in total. I mean, it, there's a couple different options we can do, but we can sort of pull it as an alternate, if you will, um, and get that with the SD, SD numbers that we get in, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that will be needed for the committee as a whole when they make mm -hmm. this decision the hybrid one too you know that doesn't have the doors to the top I, you know that one where it's sort of open on the top and just a tiny bit open and the sides come all the way down that one I think it has less HVAC requirements if the sides are full floor to ceiling and the tops uh, and is it, of the front. Are they pulled? Yeah, I don't know if they're the sides are top to bottom or just uh, slightly down on the top to allow still for air circulation. I don't know what the code requires. You know, I just know that there'll be a cost difference if you don't have them as individual rooms. Right, and that when they are individual rooms, we can check with our sprinkler engineer. We may need a sprinkler head in each one of them. Right. It's, so there's additions, I, and I, you know, we talked about this in-house. It, it's not a huge, it's not huge, but it does add, you know, all these little bits add up. But one thing though, I, I, I you know, I talked to two people in the construction industry t yesterday, and there, there is a slight softening in the market in terms of costs of, like the cost of wood has come down, the cost of steel has come down, the cost of copper. So we might be trending in the right direction for us. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, we are too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go with your magic eight ball. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So that, and then the exterior materials, I know that is, um, is that something that has to be decided firmly by the committee before the end of schematic design? Or do we have some leeway on that too? So, I think what we could do here is we got some numbers, um, yeah. materials. So maybe we just run through those. Great. Um, and I suppose Ellen, you can chime in here, but mm -hmm. maybe we do the same thing with materials for SDs. You know, um, yeah, assuming I that we have a base, but mm -hmm. if we need to get an alternate number, Seamus most likely will just you know be able to look at the whole as a whole, sure. look at it with a different material and probably just, you know, give us a rough number. I'm sure he will. It's easy to do, Josephine, at this stage, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just to go back to um, sort of the presentation we had um, a few weeks back on materials, 
Um, of course, you know, we have your existing conditions here, just as a reminder in case you need that, but I'm sure you don't. <laughs> everyone no, it's remembers good to the beautiful see. stone. <laughs> that you, yeah, no, it's a good thing for everyone to remember that that is the front of the building yes. and, and part of the west side and the east side. This all stays the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then just to go back to that rare rendering that we were um, looking at, where we have, um, you know, a brick over a stone, um, a stone material. Um, and this, you know, I think was probably the option that a lot of people were um, most comfortable with. But um, just to like dive right into numbers, um, we we did ask Seamus, our cost estimator, um, to give us square foot costs for the several materials that we looked at. And, you know, brick, of course, is the overall winner for uh, being the lowest cost at 40 to 42 dollars per square foot um and you know you can play a lot of games with brick so it's definitely um you know a, a very nice material that we can um use for you know a good portion of the of the building um the next one um that we looked at, which we don't believe we had shown this the last presentation, but um, we had um, Seamus price out Eriscraft, mm -hmm. and that's at fifty dollars square foot. So it's um, a pretty good cost for um, you know just a little bit higher than brick. Um, Ellen, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about Eriscraft. I know. No, you I. I I think it's a nice prod product and um, we like it because it, you know, it has texture, it comes in variety of colors um, and it can work well with brick. And we've used it before. It's a tried and true product. And it's, it's in laid up meaning install, installed very similar to brick. Mm -hmm. And then um, we jump to the slate sculptings that we looked at at the last um, presentation. And <laughs> we're a little bit higher here at 120 and 130. We had the same uh, comment, Christine. We were shocked that this came out so high. And, you know, because Josephine and I worked on Tufts, granted, years ago, but it, we used it because of it was affordable. So I don't know what happened. It's really I, expensive. I, I wonder why changed. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the Iris craft is probably. Now I get why you were talking about number two option. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, to dive into the metal panel, um, we're looking at, you huh. know, a re reasonable price, 75 to 80. But with metal panel, there's a lot of different options. We showed something that looked more like wood siding almost at the last presentation, but we just wanna show you that there's a lot of different options yeah. um, to go with when we look at metal panel. Um, it's it's not just, you know, typical, um, you know, thin siding. It, it can really go in many different directions. So we just wanted to show a couple of different examples that I think when um, we noted maybe the, um, that the elevator would be clad in in metal. I think some people might have. Um, I think some people were thinking potentially that it might look a little bit differently, but um, it can. It, it sort of goes away sometimes, depending on the colors you choose and and the patterns and et cetera. Um, and we we have a few you know um, locations on the building that no matter what you go with yeah. for the um, the base and the top, we have some locations that we probably will be using like metal panel for, for instance, like at the elevator and maybe at the at the um, the sawtooth grooves, potentially at some of the pop-outs that we have on the, um, the rear of the building. So this is just something to think about. Because it's a well. metal roof also. Correct. Yes. We have the standing C metal roof. And a benefit, just saying, of the metal panels there that you're showing is they do have high insulation in them. Right. More like than a composite panel, so correct. it's built yeah. in. Right. Wow. I'm surprised that's so high, too. Um, 
And yeah. this is for the material and insulate uh, installation. These were material costs. Just material. Correctly. Could you tell us if like are some, you know, just easier or more difficult, which would be the least labor intensive and which ones are like more specialist? Well, I mean, <laughs> masonry, masonry is never, um, I, it's simple to a mason, I suppose, but it's, it's labor intensive. Um, yeah. You know, um, the Aris craft is laid up the same way, right, Ellen? As brick, yes, just yeah, okay. yeah, and it's the same width, so it's it's an easier and it's you know and the whole who install the mason I assume installs aircraft, so it's one trade, um, right. and you know the the it's just been saying we can go in we can have on the drawings requesting alternate pricing. Um, and I think that's the best way. So we don't need you guys to decide today which one. We probably want to decide um, a combo, right? So do we do uh, Aris Craft with brick above? Do we do uh, just a different color brick on the base and a different color brick above? So you try to you almost get the color uh, division like you got with the sculptings. Um, yeah, I don't know why. So, so it's funny. Uh, up until now, I thought you you all said the brick was the most expensive option, uh, and then the sculpting was medium, and the and the metal was the least expensive. Anyways, it, so with these new prices, why wouldn't we just go all brick? Lots of you know different colors, whatever, but why not brick? It, it's not. It's not. It, it's we can, but I think we we should get the pricing because it's just going to be too. It could be too much brick, Sharon. Okay, um, but I know Sharon, we're looking. We're going to be looking to save a lot of money. Um, and so if this is well, a way to do it, it's not necessarily a lot of money. What I'm trying to get the designers to. So we're not deciding anything here today. We almost try to are prepping this up for what you can bring to the committee yeah. as a whole to help make the best decision the easiest way. They're saying the material of the brick is the cheapest, but it is very labor intensive. So even we're looking at metal panels here that are more twice as you know expensive, right. but they can get slapped up real fast and easy. So you save money on the labor. So what I want them to come back is to beef this out a little bit more. And when they give us these different rendering options to look at, truly which one is the most, you know, more expensive or kind of in the same because the truth is metal and brick could end up about the same is it am i right yeah i you know what we're so close to getting cost estimates i i would rather not commit to any cost i mean we did get these from the cost estimator but we i think the proof will be in the pudding and we'll know where right. we are um, let me clarify i wasn't asking because i get it i'm not asking for exact costs i'm so when you bring the renderings you are able to say this is the most expensive way of doing it. Sure. This is the least. These are about the same. Yep. I think that will help the committee be able to figure out what will be best for the building. Right. And we will do that after we get the cost estimates, correct? So that means okay. we do not have to make a decision on exterior materials no. until after SD and when we're in DD. And I, I, yeah. Right. When you when what, we go ahead, when we start, let me just say this: when we start yeah. DD, we need to know. But we're going to provide you with the information before then to make the decision. So that's like July, August. Yes. Okay. Is yeah, that? Craig, I see. Yeah. You agree? Oh yes, we have Craig here. He's so quiet. Help us. See, he raises his hand. We just jump in. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, we just we just cut each other <laughs> off. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Josephine. Did you? Well, I guess what I was going to say was, yes, we start um, DDs end of July, but um, what we would want, I think, is a base for our SDs. So what we do is we say we, we are calling out this material over this material for SDs, and then we have an alternate that we pull aside. So we have a base number that we're working off of, and then we have an alternate. So what we would want from you right now is mm -hmm. just what do you want as that base? 
And then those numbers will clearly identify because he's going to give us more than just a material cost in his cost estimate. So we're going to get something a little bit more detailed from him. And then you'll actually see what that base really is going to cost. And you'll see what a little bit more info on what that alternate is to. And I think that will probably sway you folks either way. And then we can look at, you know, potential renderings. So Ms. Architect, I just want to clarify what is base because that's where we can get, <laughs> oh. you mean the bottom of the building or just- Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, base basically means um, what you want to go with for the materials as, um, as your cost estimate. It's, can it's you, can option, we... option one, right? It's, 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 it's um, not, not vertically based, but <laughs> more so like what you want to go with for materials. Base so bid. Base bid, yeah. So can procedurally, I agree 100% with what, what Josephine um, just said. And that base concept, I would recommend be the one that the design subcommittee likes the best. And then, I don't think we want to make the cost estimators crazy with many, many alternates, but maybe have one alternate that we suspect will be right. um, maybe like a backup plan. Also something that you guys like, but it's not necessarily your preferred option. Can I make a suggestion of what the base could be? Yes. I would suggest the base be the base bid, be the errors craft at the bottom. Can you point to that, whoever has brought this up? is the Aris craft at the bottom and then brick above it. And then the alternate be brick, the whole thing brick, but different color at the bottom. Just so being, oh. you've already brought us some of those renderings and options, but I think you we need to have one done that you just suggested, Ellen, and have that so that yeah. we can look at that. Yes, but I, I think what we wanna do, Christine, is get pricing. Yeah, but I, I and so we're looking for you guys to, if you agree with that. And Craig, you chime in. What, Craig? What's from your professional opinion? What is the base best base bid approach? I would say if the design subcommittee is comfortable with what you just suggested, where you've got uh, a different texture for the the bottom level of the building, and there you know there's different color options. Um, with, you know, the brick above everyone based on the public comments, at least it seemed like everyone was universally opposed to the metal panel, um, concept. So maybe push that aside and say, just what Alan said, we would do the Aris craft and brick. I think that would be a nice and more dynamic, um, mm -hmm. configuration, put that as sort of option number or, you know, base bid, and then like Alan said, go to all brick, different colors. You know, there's still uh, opportunity for variation in design, mm -hmm. but that would be our, I suspect, a, a deduct alternate. Can I ask you guys, so, um, so I am not an architect. I don't play one on TV, nor do I really care. <laughs> this, this isn't my, this, I don't, I don't, I don't care. And when I'm looking at the big picture about all of these things that I know we're going to have to make tough decisions about COVID or not, uh, um, uh, this is a wonderful place to save a lot of money. And so I guess my question is, why wouldn't we do the base as all brick and the alternate as the heiress craft? And and brick on top. What 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 does it matter? For me, oh, really? I think from an architectural point of view, the Aris Craft is the better product and it's a better design. But in the end, it's not my choice. It's our recommendation, and it's up to you. And I we know the money thing, Sharon. We totally get that. Um, but having the brick alternate we will have that number and to make that switch for us from aircraft to brick isn't is simple it's not a big deal no no, no. I, my my question is what's the difference between what why does it matter if we choose okay. one as the base and one as the alternate it, 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 is there a pro or a con yeah. i would say that it's only the message that uh uh, is coming across, mm -hmm. I would recommend you put into the base what you guys prefer from a design standpoint. Right. 
Because so the message to whom? The you know general public, the cost as mayors, everybody. Just it, it's a, what you're saying is you know six of one, half dozen of another, and you're correct. Um, but if we are saying so, this is just this is crazy. But how much of this is politics? So if we are saying, oh, we really want the heiress craft, does that mean? Is that admitting to them that that we want that, and so they're going to boost the price, or no? That's the cost estimator is on our side. Yeah. Okay. It's not out for bid. He okay. is going to analyze it based on his professional knowledge of the current construction market. Great. Okay. Yeah. So if so, it, it's I not going to affect anything, then I don't care. Okay. <laughs> so what to bring to the building committee? Um, maybe one with brick on top and then one all brick. And Sharon, I was unclear. Were you saying brick on bottom and flip? No, what, what, what Ellen is, is recommending the brick on top okay. and the heiress craft right. on the bottom. Yeah, I think we just need to see a couple of renderings because then we put it back into the architects. It's about color. And I think people really, the visual is really important when they're making a decision. And where cost wise, you know, I, I and the feedback we've gotten so far, let's pursue um, this new material and um, with the brick. And maybe, and then the other rendering, maybe all brick. I don't know if that would end up slightly less. I mean, there is a, you know, like a $10 square foot difference. There is a lot of square footage. But. Yeah. And I think that's what in the end, what the committee's going to have to decide between for an exterior material. I just feel like I have a feeling what's going to happen later on, based on my previous experience with other projects, is we're, we're going to be deciding whether or not we're using all new furniture or reusing a lot of our furniture now. And, and so if we're I don't know. You know, the exterior material is forever. So maybe the furniture is less important. I'm, Lots of things going on in the head. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Ellen, Josephine, uh, are we clear on what you'll bring back to um, the next building committee meeting? When is that building committee meeting? <laughs> July 5th. <laughs> July 5th. No, we're not, oh, we're not gonna yeah. have pricing till, yeah. when is the estimate coming in, Josephine? Um, let me look at, let me pull up a date here. So I'm just trying to be clear on what is needed right now. So there was some <laughs> wobble on that. Do we need to have the material picked at the end of schematic design and then finalize it later? We, we just picked the base bid and that's what we needed. Okay. Eris Which craft is be on the bottom. On top. Yes. And there it's got on the bottom. That's Josephine, that's what you requested, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, then the cost estimates we're expecting back from the cost estimators um, July 22nd. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, Michael Alexander is going to want to take a quick peek at it. I want to take a quick peek at it, you know, the ones that we're getting from the town. And then so on the 25th is when we'll be able to sort of share them with, with um, the town and the committees. Okay, so, so we'll be at that um, building committee meeting. Is, is and there's that the not only or the twenty sixth now, Sharon. It's... That's my understanding. Is that the next LBC is on the twenty sixth? Okay, twenty sixth. So it would be the twenty sixth. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you. I'm glad you did this research because it really pivoted us on kind of what we were worried about and thinking. Josephine, um, Ellen, is there anything else? No, I, I think I, I'm glad we made a decision. <laughs> um, any other comments, uh, Sharon or George on this? Are no, you, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> for your patience. I no. think you deserve martinis tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, we're, at, we're, we're, this is a good group and whatever we can do to help you guys. <laughs> Thank you. And I totally we don't agree deserve with, uh, you. 
Yeah, I totally agree with what Ellen said, so. Great, thanks, George. Welcome. Thanks for weighing in. Um, yeah, no, we really need you guys. We're really dependent on, on what you bring to us and your professional insight. So, um, woof, that was a lot. Okay, so uh, we see you again when, it, uh, Craig, when it, is it, would it be the, are they coming back for July 5th or? So July 5th is, is what? I mean, the 8th, July 8th is the next building committee meeting. So do we see them then or we don't see them until the 20? The next design subcommittee? Um, and the next design subcommittee. I don't know that they're gonna have anything that they're, right. they're just gonna, you know, over the next week, they're gonna be putting together that, the finishing touches on the schematic design cost estimate set. And then I don't know that they're going to have anything developed um, for the eighth, more than what, you're, what we're seeing here. And then so perhaps the you know the the following one we will have so that would be like July 29th. We'll have cost estimates in hand. Um, we can you know finalize some of these. Hopefully finalize some of these. You know the confirm this decision that we made today about the, the material. And then beyond that, then we'll start getting into color selection and, and things of that nature. But I don't know that there's going to be anything for them to present on uh, at the next design subcommittee. Yeah, I don't. So I don't think they need to be there at July 8th. I'm trying to figure out um, agendas here. And then the next one would be the 22nd. But I'm not even sure we'll see them at the 22nd because that's when the cost estimate is, you know, just coming out. Right. So. Uh, the next full meeting then would be the 26th and ours wouldn't be until August 5th. Of course, we can always change that, but um, it sounds like the next, when do we, so what do you think, Craig, uh, for the next, what does the design have to worry about, design subcommittee worry with the designers in the next month? So I would say let let them get through the schematic design next week, the schematic design cost estimate next week. Then um, I would ask um, the Fine Gold Alexander Group to take a look at what design decisions they're going to need during uh, design development, and then feed that information back to you and I, uh, or you and me, and um, say, okay, you know, we we want to have this type of meeting, this type of feedback on these, you know, weeks. And then we can tailor those agendas to, to match that because there'll be a bunch of decisions that um, the design team will be looking for you, mm -hmm. this committee subcommittee to make. Um, but it sounds like we don't have those pinned down right now. So let maybe give them a couple of weeks to sort of get that blocked out and then we'll develop um, that DD design subcommittee schedule. And one thing that's going to be part of DD, and it just came to mind, but we'll give you a list, is, is colors of the interior colors, P finishes, carpet. It, it, this is a, it'll be a flood of, of information um, in, a, in a nice way. You know, we'll, we'll probably come back to you a couple of times. We'll come, have a couple of rounds of that. But that's a big piece of this next phase, as well as the FF and E, the furniture. Um, Craig, can you get, um, what's the status of that? So that we gave you this DeFure proposal. Um, what's the what's the turnaround or what what's the next steps with that? Because we want to get them going pretty, they're like ASAP. Got it. Um, so, so the town was hoping um, to have the full design package. So just that AV um, and lighting, those components. Um, so that they understand sort of like the full proposal um, before proceeding or before signing the contract. Do you have in your project budget, do you have money in there for AV and ff &E and lighting? Yes, but it was uh, the original design, the, the design fee excluding those things has slightly exceeded that budget. So we're already kind of working at a disadvantage. Okay. All right. Well, they're, they're not going to get going till we get going. So if they could reconsider and, and jumpstart the FF&E, because it's going to take us a couple of weeks to get, um, you know, the proposals. 
but if that's the way we're going, that's fine. What was there, I guess, um, was there a rationale? Why, why were those items excluded? And maybe this, is, let's have an offline discussion. We always exclude them. Oh, always. Yeah. yeah. So I heard ASAP in there. Does that have anything? Does that need to go on an agenda for the design subcommittee? Anything in there in the next? No, I, that, that's more of a town of Amherst decision. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Contractual stuff. All right. So you'll follow up on that. Um, okay. So it is, it, is there anything else? So can I ask Craig a question is, so is there a question about our fee? No. Uh, okay. Cause we're proceeding. And yes. if there is, I mean that. No. Okay. Great. It's just, you know, they, they, they need AV. Okay. Design services. They need lighting design services. They obviously need furniture design services, but all of them sort of as a package, they, they okay. I make our budgets align. We need to understand the full picture. And the question, some towns actually have AV people on staff. Is that any chance Amherst has that? I do not know. Like the technology department. We have an yeah. IT department, but they, they manage the entire town's IT. I'm not sure. Uh, it's an offline not, discussion. Yeah, let's do, because that they may be able to do what we need done here, because it's not heavy on AV on this project. All right, great. So, Craig, you know how to carry that part through, right? Yep. I had a couple other items, I think, Craig, from what you had noted a couple of days ago, and I'm not sure if we touched base on that today or not, but it was the um, public comments from the, the initial round and then just the EV charging stations. So those were the two topics that we um, thought we would touch base on today if time allowed. I think, so I think I, that would be, go ahead, sorry. Christine. I propose a change. I mean, we're at 10 of uh, to noon um, and we were gonna do round three comments. Uh, can we push those to July 8th, Craig? And then today just finish up with going back to round one, uh, questions from the designer. That works for me. That would be okay. Yes, I mean, we had a fun. few in there that are designed, but like, do they, do you think it's sensitive? Do we have to do round three for them to finish up schematic design by next week? At, at this point, anything relative, relative to schematic design has already, like, has already uh, that window has closed. So anything that we talk about now, we're going to be looking at it from the uh, framework of design development. Fantastic. So if it's okay so with this week Aaron or next week, George, can we move this round three to our agenda on July 8th and just listen to the designer with any issues they had with the round one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Josephine, okay. can I ask you a question? Is the charging stations, were you trying to get something on the drawings for SDs? Um, well, we could potentially put a note in. It's not so much we can't coordinate anymore at this point, but we could put notes in if, if necessary. We, we have a site plan here just to sort of maybe touch base with with you folks about um, because it, this is just you know initial discussions and um, Craig you sent an email I think it was this week on that so um, potentially at the bottom of this um, presentation we just have a site plan so we could sort of look at it together and um, if you have any comments um, I think our initial reaction is just um, you know we don't have a lot of parking spots and we didn't know if your um, feedback was to have, you know, those um, spots used, or if you're thinking about potentially having, um, you know, public sidewalk spots, et cetera. So maybe just getting a little bit of feedback from you folks would be great. I was envisioning those existing spaces. Uh, does that say SMT parking? Oh, staff parking. Oh, so that's definitely not staff parking. Um, we had agreed that what would be there so at the time, five, six years ago, it was all going to be handicap parking. But so now maybe it's half handicapped and half uh, charging, car charging. How do y'all feel about that? You said, so said it again, half. Is sure, handicapped half handicapped and, and charging. yeah, car charger stations. 
So, so no public space, like only if you have an electric car. Right. Yeah. I mean, there was not going to be any, because there's only, I think like nine, nine spots. Um, the thought all along has been, those are all going to be handicapped spaces, but now fast forward to, you know, the year 2025, when we open, we should definitely have uh, oh, yeah. car charging stations. So if, if half the spaces could be handicapped and the other half car charging stations, I thought that would be nice. Well, the question I have on the car charging is, isn't there a public lot across the street and aren't there any there? Yeah. I mean, why do you need them on your site, Sharon? Because the That's thing, good. some I don't, I don't have a, a car that needs a charging station, but what I understand is it takes a while to charge your car. So a car's going to be there a while. Uh, so I'm completely out of my element. What I heard from the town sustainability co uh, coordinator is that it would be ideal if it could happen at the library. And so aren't there fast cha charging yeah, stations? Yeah, but who's buying? And I'm, 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 yeah. I'm being the money part of this. Who's buying them? It's adding costs. And do you really need them? If you do, we'll put them in. But you know, I, it's not typical that we we would put them in. My I feel strongly yeah. about. Well, go ahead. I was going to say my recommendation is that if they are in, they would not be coming out of this project's budget. Rather, they'd be financed from something okay. else, and we'd just be accommodating the it. space for them. Okay. That, yes. That was, that, that was going to be my question: Is can we just? maybe plan for the infrastructure of it and not necessarily talk about installing the charging stations themselves. So maybe just making sure yeah. that the site is prepared for the possibility of it. Well, you're saying have conduit under the- Whatever, under whatever, the whatever form it may take. So my feeling is there is a public town lot across the street and as demand increases for EV that the town can find funding and add more and more of those spaces across the street to be EV. Right. I, I hate to see, I only count seven spots there. If four of them were handicapped, we're talking about three spots. I, I don't want to see those three spots just become for electric vehicle. I think we need a few spots for the regular public, for the mom in a minivan or whatever to drop something off, like to keep them open. Um, I, I just, it's so ideal across the street at town lot that can be EV, you know, heavily. Um, and let them deal with it. I don't want to see anything coming out of even infrastructure beef out out of our budget. We've got to start thinking about where, as Ellen said earlier, it's little bits of money bits, but I think we have to start thinking about, can we start saving some bits? Mm -hmm. We're going to have a net zero building. That's amazing. And there'll be lots of other amazing things about it. But I, I just, my other question with the site plan, I, I know there's topography issues there. Um, is there any way to squeeze out a few more parking spots there? Um, I, Sharon had said nine, but I only see seven there. And I know, um, you know, there's, uh, um, it, well, we don't, there's trash and loading areas also that have to be open, but it, I don't know if you guys have really looked at the site. Is there any way to add more, some more spots? Go ahead, Justine. I think um, at the time as well, we were looking at this as being staff spots. And I think Sharon mm -hmm. just said it's not staff spots any longer. So that's a change as well. I don't think they were all accessible in the last in the last SD submission. So we'll, we're, we really need to loop back and look at that because that takes up a lot more with yeah um so yeah if that's the request we we definitely need to convey that to our um to to our you know um site folks um that's something new i think the code dictates how many spots we must have yeah. yes and then if you want to go and i don't know what that is justine um but if you want to go over and above that you certainly can but it it will take more space as justine noted I just noticed the seven there is staff. As soon as you turn them to handicap, they need wider, you know, you have the access point. So I, what do we get in, down to five? It just the, seems, yeah. Right. And that's, and it's sloping. So I don't know how yeah. handicapped they can be. That's, we'll look at it for sure. Okay. And right. if we so, can squeeze more out. The one thing George needs, I, I think he actually does need a charging station for the van he's going to buy in a couple of weeks. So, well, 
couple of weeks would be fantastic. But um, the reality <laughs> is, the reality is that we were hoping that there was going to be at least electricity in the storage shed area. Um, I'm working towards getting a grant to actually pay for the charging station to go along with the van. So what is just important to me is that there is electricity going out to the shed area, which I kind of assumed was going to happen anyways for lighting mm -hmm. and such. Um, but yeah, the charging station itself is something that I'm going to fight for outside the project. So I, I have a feeling that this will be a larger conversation at JLBC, you know, at the full committee. I think there's going to be a lot of different opinions there. So just clarifying, because now I just heard it went from staff parking labeled there to public parking, half handicap. So George, there's a van that is a library van that will get parked in this area? Correct. I mean, I envision it being parked in the loading area because whenever we're going to get deliveries or something, there'll be staff here to move the van. But but yeah, the, uh, some one at least one parking space somewhere will be taken up by the by the town's van. So is there going to be a parking space down near that loading area? There's nothing marked there. And does that need to be investigated? It should be. There should be a, a, a space determined for the library's delivery van, yes. Be it one of the upper spots or a spot in front of the storage shed, uh, there, there, there really needs to be a location to park the library's vehicle. And that's 24 seven like availability. Yes, yes. Okay, so Josephine, you got that one. And could there be a spot down near the loading dock area? I see the property line. I know again, there's topography issues. But yeah, it's it's tight down there. Yeah. But if that, so you'll include that in your um, in your designing. We'll add and that to the list. Can I ask a question? Because since we did this, so much has happened in terms of deliveries to buildings. When you get an Amazon delivery or a book delivery, are they all coming down, still coming down this drive or are they parked out front? Them are. Some of them are. Some of them are coming down the driveway and it's the brave go down the driveway and the not so brave park on the street with the four ways on. That's the best well, way to say it. So would you prohibit the trucks from coming down? Because we can. No, uh, no, I think it's, I think it, it would be the most practical for the trucks to be able to go down okay. because you have some companies that are changing their policies. Amazon, for instance, will not, or uh, not Amazon, um, FedEx will not bring into the building if they can't easily access it. So they leave it outside. So I, I definitely do want, not want to deter delivery vehicles from being able to get down to the loading area. Mm -hmm. But how do they get out, George? Do they back up? They back out, yeah. Yikes. That's a safety issue, but that's why I don't park in the driveway very often. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it it is definitely it's definitely a safety issue. It's a concern, but um, it's it's what they do because the turn the existing turnaround area is not necessarily big enough for most of the vehicles Correct. that deliver supplies. Okay, but we are we are one on we are one of the few downtown businesses so to speak that do have a driveway mm -hmm. so it's it's you know delivery drivers are accustomed to delivering in an urban area where they don't have that luxury all right well get the parking design specialists on that <laughs> creative thinking um you had some is there more new stuff or do you want to talk about the round one comments yeah, I think if no one else no one else has any comments on this, we can go to the um the, the round one comments. Anything else, Sharon George? No. And so the there weren't too many um that we wanted to to run through, but um sorry, it's taken a while to load. Um, we highlighted in orange just the ones we wanted to do briefly touch on today. Um, and again, like you mentioned, some of this might be happening in DD, but um, we understand that um, the Burnett 
gallery has been brought up a few times about having natural lighting um, entering the space and um, you know at the moment where it is um, it's in a central location and we we've been showing it in a central location I think it's good it's going to have to stay in a central location so um, you know we could potentially look at having some of those walls have glazing in some of those walls depending on what's being displayed um, so there's potential for lighting to to enter but um, but we're you know we went through the plans with you so we're all clear that it, it is a central location at the moment so we just wanted to reiterate that here are there architectural lighting ways to like they say natural lighting and i think you know a window is always the nicest or a skylight that natural natural light but lighting now you know there's like crappy lighting and there's you know led of various types like i mean the other way of looking at this is there is there no, you know slight costly change but to make it better electrical lighting yeah i mean they definitely have specialty lighting for art spaces exhibit spaces and i mean some of that might be um back to like talking to curators but um and and then some of it is specialty lighting perhaps that um our lighting consultant can can run through um i don't know ellen if you've worked on a space like this before where maybe a lighting consultant yeah i the question that and i think sharon you you had said and i may have misheard but this is really a casual gallery isn't it it's not like mu museum quality gallery oh, uh Oh, oh, in between. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's it's a rotating monthly gallery display. Um, and I mean, my thoughts are natural lighting is the worst thing you can do for art right. of any yeah. kind of medium. Yeah. So I, I look at this comment and I, I don't think this comment is coming from the perspective of someone who would maintain a gallery because right. the last thing you want in a gallery is natural lighting. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I really disagree with that comment altogether. We I was too. just commenting that if you're looking at art and the artist's intention, there's good lighting and bad lighting. You want lighting that shows the true color mm -hmm. spectrums. And we would have good lighting. Yeah. That's what uh, one of the things our lighting designer would be. It's, so we, and we can work that through. That'll be part of what we do. Great. That's great. Um, and so the next item was just um, a cafe, coffee bar, water bar. So we just wanted to make sure that we were going down um, the correct path. We do have um, counter space in the main, um, near the circ desk in the main cafe area. Um, and all you folks are looking for is infrastructure in the wall for future potential sink or coffee bar location. Is that correct? Or refrigerator. I think so. Yeah. Not not necessarily for day one, but some other librarian. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't take it on, Sharon. Um, <laughs> in the walls, right? That there's enough for a sink, um, or, or potentially a dishwasher, and um, some kind of refrigerator. That just the power and the pipes are there. Has it? I'm just curious, has anybody seen a kit at this setup in, in a um, library? Yes. Have you? Okay. Well, yeah. So, it, so in theory, uh, at some point, the library could invite an outside vendor, the library could contract with somebody and they could sell their food, drink, refreshments, what, okay. whatever it is. And so it would be great to have a sink there or something. Sure. We can do that or it for special special events with the area there caterers come you know it could become multi-purpose but down the road but it would be nice to just have the basics there so it's not mm -hmm. so costly if there is a decision to ever do it when sharon retires exactly. yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
We'll have it ready for your retirement. Party. Just to, you know, just to just to clarify, I'm I'm actually very much in favor of libraries having food and drink. I think it's brilliant. I think it's the one thing that Barnes and Noble does that's a really mm-hmm. good idea. Yeah. Letting food and drink and, and people Mingle. enjoy their coffee table books. I think it's awesome. Um, but I have spoken with other librarians who do that kind of a thing, and the actual the the, the contractual process can be a nightmare. There are also health concerns, health inspectors that then have to be yes. involved and I'm I'm just yeah. not ready to take that on quite yet. Mm-hmm. It gets complicated. It's yeah. running another business. It may I totally get you. Yeah. It is. So just designers, right? If whatever on a low cost, if you can if you're already running the conduit or whatever, just make sure that there's something there. <laughs> it's making me hungry. Yeah. So, we'll be quick. Um, the next one is e- ESL um, needs a living room. And um, I think, you know, someone noted here, there will be a reception area. However, no couches. Um, we don't have an actual space. You know, as you know, we moved ESL up to the top floor. So we've got that nice um, corridor circulation space. And we do ha- show some seating um, in that space, but there's no actual, um, you know, waiting room. Um, or living area. Um, Correct. Yeah. And that, and that's good. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then lastly, um, at least one dark room light <laughs> corner. Um, and I think MBLC will scream at this one, but. Um, what does it say, Josephine? <laughs> at least one dark womb like corner. <laughs> so it, it was the, the thought behind that. I think that, that's the only request we would get from a town of Amherst because that's, <laughs> you guys are unique. No, the, so the, it, it was meant to be, uh, the, the comment was coming from the point of view, they're looking for a low sensory space. Um, oh. So for example, when we were just at, where the heck were we? Was it Medford? Or yeah, or Wilbur. Medford, yes, Medford. Medford. So it, it had that room where the lights could be dimmed and there was a nice, you know, it, there was a glass wall and um, I, I, so I don't, I don't know how to go about doing this. We obviously don't have any extra rooms laying around. So it, if the possibility, I, I don't know if it's within the lighting to make that as flexible as I'm, I, I don't know the answer. It's, it's all about having a low sensory space. Could it ever be, Sharon, and I understand now that I understand the comment now, um, could it ever be in the, is this for the the adults or the kids? I, I think it could be either. Okay. Because if it's, it could be a group, one of the group study rooms. I mean, those lights can be certainly on a dimmer. That makes sense to me. It does. That's, that That was my thought on it was dimmable lighting maybe that would be the interior group study room yeah I, when i say interior i mean the one that's sort of in the central um space of the library not the ones on the perimeter walls yep yep thank you and that was it for our questions I just have one general question, you know, these things that keep you up in the middle of the night. Um, Do we have, looking to the future and where we've been the last couple of years and evolved um, with COVID and Zoom, do we have enough rooms that people will be able to use to have their like Zoom meetings? I I was, yeah. Yeah, we had this discussion a little bit, I think maybe Sharon with you individually, but we will um, want to hear from you as we, you know, begin DDs. That'll probably be one of our items that Ellen pointed out on the list of things to talk through. But um, where you expect to have Zoom calls because the acoustics have to be a little bit different yeah. in those spaces. You can't just jump into any room and have a Zoom call. So um, that's something that you folks will need to think about, and um, we'll have to, you know, talk through that um, with you and our acoustical consultant and um, and our um, electrical folks too. I think all the group study rooms need to have that, that possibility. I, right. Uh, yeah. I'm just, so we're experiencing this in our office, right? So we, we've created a couple more conference rooms 
and the acoustics are terrible <laughs> and the AV is terrible. So it, it's, it's equipment based and really uh, finishes based sure. uh, as uh, other solutions, but the equipment um, for the, our smaller spaces is not bad, but when you're talking your meeting room, I think, I think this is where we want to chat with, uh, have our AV consultant chat with your IT people, because I'm sure the town's been doing these. Yes. I think the town has one room um, Aren't they that, that, that they schools, use for though? town council. Uh, so the schools are in process right now. So oh. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure where they, they're okay. behind us in their process. And it's okay. why they're worried about when we come off this and go hybrid, right? If we're meeting in person and trying to do the Zoom, they're not really fully outfitted to handle that. No. The schools are. You, are the schools oh, anyone still, any committees? Are not, the schools in person in Amherst? Oh yeah, we all are. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah, good. But I mean, like all the committees. It being Amherst, we have a lot of committees, um, mm -hmm. but they can really only handle the town council right now in a hybrid right. capacity. Right. Your rooms that have groups of folks doing a hybrid situation for a meeting. Um, it can really be a nice experience if you're in a room that's set up for it because yes. there are speakers built into the ceiling, there's mics in the appropriate locations, there's correct acoustics, and you can really have a successful, pretty cool hybrid meeting. If you've been in one, um, you'll know exactly you know what we're, we're referring to. And I, that's something we should probably be thinking I can envision like our boardroom being set up yep. that way, but depending on cost and, and possibly the small meeting room that's downstairs on the ground level. But, um, but depending on cost, I don't see how we could possibly outfit every room that we have in the space. I was just thinking for all of our group study rooms, I think there may be four, there's four of them and, and the tutor rooms, you know, if they had that ability, but I, but they wouldn't need to be set up for those hybrid meetings just for somebody to be able to do right. a exactly. Zoom. Right. right. Okay. As long as you guys are being really futuristic, because that's what we're trying to build here. Um, yep. And just the libraries, I, I do work at Chicopee Public Library and the tours we had at Medford and um, in Woburn, their rooms that they do have are just booked out. They're yeah. in demand. And I think that will only increase in the future. Mm -hmm. And Sharon, I was, I assume the large meeting room will have, be, have to be set up for a hybrid meeting. So I, I, I hate to be the one that decides if cost isn't an issue. Okay. Yes, that would be awesome. Okay. But I mean, how, how much extra money are we talking about? You I might not know. be able to answer. I, okay. You know, just in our small conference room, it's in, it, in, what is it? 16 by, I don't know, 25 for the equipment. It's around seven to ten thousand um, dollars yeah. so it's but I not think we're back to the cafe is what i'm i'm hoping is that you can run the electrical yes. you know and have it set up yep. and then yeah it costs ten thousand dollars for the equipment that will have to be worried about later mm -hmm. but at least if the building itself is more ready to incorporate that kind of Absolutely. modern technology i think that's worth the small cost yep we agree That was my only extra add-on. Um, Sharon, George, do you got anything else? Um, or we'll no, start I'm good. Closing out this gig. I'm good. Okay. So uh, no topics, chair 48 hours in advance. Uh, we'll move to public comment. Um, we've pretty much probably bored everybody to tears. I know, has anybody <laughs> left? <laughs> yeah, we have five in there. And at this time, hello all. Um, if you have any questions uh, or uh, a statement to make, now would be the time. Raise your hand. I'm watching. I'll give it a moment. Um, if not, then we're going to move to adjournment. I'll just say our next meeting is July 8th. The next uh, Jones Library Building Committee meeting is um, on July 5th at 4.30. And the next outreach uh, meeting will be July 26th at 4 p.m. It's I been switched to the 19th. Oh, thank for you. Outreach. Oh, for outreach. Oh, okay, you. I wasn't. So outreach is now the 19th. That yep. makes sense um, because at that same time, we're going to have the second next Jones Library Building Committee meeting. 
Okay, so I'm seeing no hands. Um, thank you all. Um, all right, so before I move to adjournment, I just, Ellen, um, I don't know if is Steve still there, and Josephine, thank you so much for all your hard work. Craig, thank you for your support. Um, this was a lot. You guys have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Sharon, it's Angela. Can you please stay on for a bit? Yes, you bet. Thank you. Okay, thanks guys. Have a good weekend. Thank, Thank you everybody. You. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, so I just wanted to catch up with you on the um, agenda for um, July. You asked me to add something to the agenda, which is something you've never asked me to do before. So I'm looking at the agenda that you sent me for the 5th of July. Yeah. And um, I just, where do you want this new item from Epsilon to go? I would put it under finances, put it under Sean's report. And I, so is it Epsilon? C. Yeah. C. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just didn't want to put it in the wrong place. You could not do wrong. Excellent. Even if Thank you put it somewhere, it's totally fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, Austin would, uh, he would agree. Let, whatever Angela says is perfect. <laughs> yeah. <Love it. laughs> Darren, so are you much. going on vacation? Did I hear? Did you yes. Hear?